So you need a San Diego travel guide. In this video, I'm not just going to showcase another mundane listicle of activities and places to see. We're gonna have fun doing it. So let's explore San Diego the ultimate fun way. Welcome to Southern California. So to start off this video, it probably makes sense to do it at the southernmost part of San Diego and California and the West Coast. Here we have the United States and there we have Mexico. You can see all the way to Tijuana. And I am here at the Imperial Beach Pier for sunset, one of the most beautiful spots for it in San Diego. Also in this video, I will be flagging some great sunset spots, so keep your eyes peeled. North of us, you can see the San Diego skyline, of course, and then Point Loma over here, which we're gonna visit all in this video. But first, let's do sunset at Imperial Beach Pier. Also, be sure to check out my virtual guide linked in the description that complements this video where you can have easy access on your phone throughout your trip. After an amazing sunset at Imperial Beach right near the US-Mexico border that starts California, it begs the question, what started California? So here at Old Town San Diego State Park, we're here at the birthplace of California. So fun fact, San Diego is the site of the first permanent Spanish settlement in this state and in 1769, Father Junipero Serra came to establish the first mission that would eventually expand to 21 missions in California. In present day, Old Town San Diego is a can't miss spot with various activities and places to see. Let's go take a little walk. You can see the Old Town vibes we have here with the architecture. There are also tours you can take here in Old Town to really get immersed in the history. Okay, right outside the Whaley House, the oldest brick structure in Southern California and maybe the most haunted place in the United States. Today, the Whaley House offers tours so you can get immersed in the entire experience behind the history of this place and the supposed hauntings, including Yankee Jim Robinson, who is the first one to die in this house and is said to still linger the grounds along with his family members. Creepy, most haunted place in America. I think it's time we have an American Horror Story series on this house. Now that we explored the beginning of San Diego, both geographically and literally, let's go to the most happening part of town, downtown. Downtown San Diego is the city's cultural hub with the historic Gas Lamp Quarter. Gas Lamp Quarter is a 16 block Victorian neighborhood with a great dining and bar scene. The name comes from the gas lamps that can still be seen along the streets. And I am here at Horton Plaza Park, which is the main square of Gas Lamp. So let's do another little walking tour. Just a block away from Horton Plaza, we have Balboa Theater. Built in 1924, this is a historic theater that is now a performing arts venue. Gas Lamp is packed with restaurants, bars, and rooftop lounges. On every corner, you'll be sure to find something you like. Fifth Avenue is the main street here with many historical buildings such as the Yuma Building. It has quirky architecture that makes for a great photo op and today hosts cultural events. Learn more about the district's history at the Gaslamp Museum David Horton House. I smell pizza. Little Italy is the trendiest part of downtown San Diego. It's a pedestrian friendly neighborhood and has tons of cocktail bars, breweries, and of course, Italian restaurants and pizza parlors. Being from New York myself, I had to try a slice. I stopped in Landini's Pizzeria where they have pizza by the slice. It was definitely no $1 NYC pizza at over $4 a slice. Looks pretty good. But after tasting it, I was pleasantly surprised. I'd probably give it an eight. I don't know, maybe I was just hungry, but... It's not bad at all. This is how you eat a pizza. 
with Italian roots myself. Gotta love this neighborhood. Italian vibes in San Diego. Quick interruption for this video and a very beautiful backdrop, wouldn't you say? If you want this tour in your pocket, on the go, on your phone, you can purchase my digital tour. I'll link it below. It has even more things to do, places to eat, best coffee shops, all that kind of stuff. If you do purchase it, I really appreciate the support. It helps me out and of course it helps you out. Okay, back to the video. So let's talk transportation for a minute. So San Diego is a big city within an even larger San Diego County. San Diego has an extensive metro system that you can use to get around here, especially if you're staying in downtown, it can be a very convenient option for you. But I will say because this county is so large, renting a car could be your best bet just to be able to experience and explore everything in the most efficient amount of time. Just like anywhere in Southern California, this is a car centered state. So for the best experience, I would say rent a car, but if not, use the trolley system. It's a little bit better than LA's metro system, I'll just say that. And also speaking of LA, it's a bit easier to drive in San Diego. There's more free parking options and a little less traffic. So the city makes it just a bit easier for you than the chaos of LA. Seaport Village is a great little seaside area in downtown. I just got a coffee at Spill the Beans. There's a little seaport market over here. Great place to go walking, bike riding, and leads to the beautiful Embarcadero Marina Park. And there's a Malibu farm coming over here, which is a staple in Los Angeles on the Malibu Pier. Really great vibes over there. I will be back. Oh, look at those trees. Oh, and the intro to this video was right across the bay at Centennial Park. We will get to that in a moment. San Diego has huge roots in U.S. history. Naval Base San Diego was established in 1922 and today is home to many Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard bases. The city remains with strong military ties and a great place to visit right near Seaport Village is Navy Pier. Here we have the USS Midway Museum, which is the longest serving aircraft carrier of the 20th century. Today, it's a museum and you can go on the boat. You also can't miss the Maritime Museum, which is home to one of the largest collections of historic sea vessels in the United States, right here in the San Diego Bay. And the centerpiece of the museum's collection is the Star of India, which is an 1863 iron bark. And right next to Navy Pier is Broadway Pier. So speaking of transportation, just a little bit ago, if you don't have a car, don't fret, because if you want to experience San Diego's island paradise, Coronado Island, you can take the ferry right from this pier over over there. Let's go start the island adventure right across the bay at Centennial Park. Did you know that San Diego is home to a resort city? Across from downtown and north of the Imperial Beach Pier, this total island paradise is known for the famous Coronado Bay Bridge, Hotel del Coronado, and some of the best beaches in San Diego. Welcome to Coronado Island. So I am starting my journey here at Centennial Park in Coronado, a beautiful waterfront park with skyline views of SD. Ooh. I'm gonna make a journey to explore the Coronado coast and then make my way back over here to Centennial for sunset and see all the buildings light up here for a golden hour. It's gonna be a nice day. Let's do it just after my coffee. Okay, let's go. Now, I did a whole video dedicated to Coronado Island showing even more spots than I'm gonna show in this video, so be sure to check it out in the link in the description below. But for now, let's go to Coronado Beach. Coronado Beach is a staple here in San Diego. I'm right outside the famous Hotel del Coronado. In a distance, I can see the Cabrillo National Monument at Point Loma, and from up above, the dunes even spell out Coronado. Right over here is the famous Hotel del Coronado. It is definitely the most recognizable part of this island, and it's one of the last remaining wooden Victorian beach resorts in the world still standing. It's also the second largest structure of its kind in the United States. And if you want to stay in a hotel that has some history and prestige, stay in Coronado. It was built in 1888, and it is said 
to be haunted. The ghost of Kate Morgan is said to haunt room 3327. She was a guest back in the day who never left. Guests have experienced lights flickering on and off, a TV switching itself on, doors that abruptly close, and more. Do you believe in ghosts? I do. Hotel Del Coronado is one of California's most haunted hotels, but don't let that stop you. Ghosts are harmless, right? And it's an awesome vibe. It's right here on the beach. Because if you're not into ghost hunting, totally fine. Coronado has some of the best beaches here in Southern California, including Coronado Beach, Silver Strand Beach, etc., all along the coast. Okay, and I made it back to the starting point today here at Centennial Park for Golden Hour. And right next to... Oh, one sec, got the ferry going out. Right next to Centennial Park, we have this little quiet beach and right next to the ferry landing. Now this, it's like small town beach vibes overlooking the city skyline. You can't do it much better than this. Okay, let's take a break from island life away from the beaches to explore San Diego's largest and most recognized park, Balboa Park. Just a few blocks from downtown, this 1,200-acre greenery is home to a big arts and cultural scene with the San Diego Zoo, San Diego Museum of Art, Japanese Friendship Garden, and even a little hidden gem called Palm Canyon Trail. And while parking is free, it is pretty difficult to find a spot. San Diego Museum of Art, very popular activity here. If you love art, you gotta stop in. I don't know though, if I'm in San Diego, I'd probably prefer to be outside, but to each their own. That being said, there are plenty of museums to check out here in Balboa Park. Some of them charge, some of them are free, but if you prefer to walk outside or even after the museum, you can't miss Palm Canyon. Let me show you why. Tucked right next to the San Diego Museum of Art, this little walkway features tons of palm tree species. It's kind of a jungle vibe. It feels a little bit like Pandora from the movie Avatar. <laughs> Okay, ooh, just trip there, but okay, maybe that's a stretch, but regardless, it's a really nice short spot to come to and spend a couple minutes at. Also, if you're enjoying this video, hit that like button. I really appreciate it. Spanish Village Art Center. This place is bursting with character and culture. This is a cultural experience in the middle of the park. Grab a cup of coffee at Daniel's Coffee on site. Ooh, that coffee smells good. And browse and purchase the artwork, pottery, and goods of Spanish culture. Sometimes you'll even encounter a squirrel. And look who we found here. Take a little walk around the Japanese Friendship Garden, which represents the bond of friendship between San Diego and its sister city, Yokohama. And again, there is a lot of museums in Balboa Park, so if you want to museum hop, buy a day pass or multi-pass for the biggest bang for your buck. So far, we've explored Old Town, Downtown, an island resort city, and a park. But I think it's time we get back to the beaches. Every beach in San Diego is unique in its own way. One of them is even nationally famous as the original Dog Beach and one of the first official leash-free beaches in the United States. Now, you may not be bringing your dog on the trip, but it's a great place for some dog watching. Right next to Ocean Beach Pier, which is a great place to take a walk or for sunset, and right across the channel is Mission Beach. And Mission Beach is just one of those SoCal beaches you don't want to miss. I'm here at the Mission Bay Jetty right across from Ocean Beach where I just was and it's the perfect place to start a journey along the coast. I got my iced coffee, it's a beautiful day, the sun is shining, so let's hit the bike path. Now, I am on my skateboard today, but you can rent a bike at any of the vendors here, including Ray's Rentals Mission Beach or Mission Beach Rentals. It's about a two mile trip or so down to Pacific Beach, but when you're on a bike path like this, next to the ocean with these vibes, it feels like nothing. Seriously, this is my favorite activity in Southern California, and there's a lot to do in Southern California, but there is just something about being under the sun and blue skies. Everyone's just enjoying a bike ride and enjoying life. 
passing by Belmont Park here in Mission Beach, which is good for the family. Some roller coasters, carnival vibe. And we're continuing the journey over to San Diego's most liveliest beach city, Pacific Beach. Plenty of things to do here at Pacific Beach. You can go to an oceanfront bar or restaurant, walk around the beach or these palm tree lined pathways. So cool. Or just literally relax and catch these awesome views of the coastline from up above. Could this be the only pier that people actually live on or vacation on? Seriously, there's just houses here on a wooden pier. Now that's pretty cool. And you get absolutely stunning views of the San Diego coast. So now we're stopping at my favorite part of San Diego, an absolute treasure and the most charming seaside community here in the city and arguably Southern California, La Jolla. Just north of Pacific Beach, La Jolla is known for its rugged coastline, barking sea lions, tide pools, sea caves, and Torrey Pine State Natural Reserve. Now, I did a whole separate video on La Jolla, so I'm not on location for this one, but be sure to check that video out because just walking along the coast of La Jolla is enough to put you in a good mood today. Use this start around Neptune Park at Winton Sea Beach and walk north to La Jolla Cove. La Jolla Cove is the most popular part of this area, surrounded by sea caves. It's a great place to snorkel, just don't get too close to the sea lions. You'll pass by a lot of terrains and gems along the way. Be sure to check out a little hidden gem in La Jolla called Sunny Gym Cave, where you walk down 145 steps from the cave store to a sea cave. It's $10 per person, and while it only takes 10 minutes or so of your time, I think it's worth it. For more hidden gems of San Diego, including some in La Jolla, also check out my Hidden Gems of San Diego video. But also in La Jolla and a little bit above the ocean, you can't miss Mount Soledad National Veterans Memorial. It is here on a mountaintop, so it's a beautiful drive up, and not only does it honor veterans living or deceased, but you also have amazing 360 degree views of San Diego all the way to Mexico. We have the United States, and then you have Mexico. Where else do you get a view like that? Torrey Pines is also a can't-miss spot. Famous for hosting the PGA Golf Tour for the Farmers Insurance Open, also known as the West Coast Swing. It's a place where the cliffs are a little more rugged and unstable. Let me get up. You have paragliders flying the skies, and also, down below is the nude beach. Let's go take a visit. So this is no casual walk down to the beach. This is the California way. You'll have to walk down many stairs and cliffs to get down here from the Torrey Pines Gliderport parking lot. But it is pretty easy, even if you're a beginner, you can do it. Just be careful while you walk. As always, And we're headed down to the beach. Ooh, we got a long way to go. So here we are at Black's Beach. You can tell because the sand is black. There is actually like no one here today for probably a few reasons. One, it is not a weekend. Two, it's a bit chilly. And three, the beach is kind of a mess from the storms that happened in January. So usually on a weekend, this place is packed with naked people. But don't get the wrong idea of that. It's actually not really like a creepy kind of curvy scenario. It's really just a lot of local San Diegans who like to come to this beach, take their clothes off, 
just feel free, feel the energy. Definitely a spot that is worth checking out if you feel comfortable um, being in a nudist scenario. You're not expected to get nude yourself. Don't be a creeper. This is definitely a hot spot here in San Diego. Very well known for what it is. If the trail down to Black's Beach wasn't enough for you, let's go hiking. And we're headed to San Diego's most popular hiking spot maybe, and for good reason, Cowles Mountain. We're here hiking Cowles Hike here in San Diego. Very popular, lots of people here. Rohan. And back. <laughs> and back. <laughs> Up to the top, three miles out and back. Very muddy today from the storms. Thumbnail. <laughs> I'm dying. It's tough. In fact, what? You can buy a mountain. How so? Someone bought this in 1974. From who? We'll never know. <laughs> the very top of Cowles Mountain. About a mile and a half up. It's beautiful up here, breezy. 360 degree views of San Diego and Mexico. We're 1,591 feet up above San Diego, the tallest point in the Cowles Mountains and the Mission Trails Regional Park. Okay, here we are at Golden Hour at the top of Mission Hills Regional Park, the highest point here at Cowles. And it's beautiful. <laughs> and making our way down during golden hour. So we've seen a lot of good views so far in this video of San Diego, including Cowles Mountain and Mount Soledad. But where I am right now, I think just might be the best. It's called the Cabrillo National Monument, which honors explorer Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo after he first stepped ashore in 1542. So the Cabrillo Monument is on Point Loma, which is a rugged peninsula that I pointed out when I was at the Imperial Beach Pier. It's $20 per vehicle to get in here, but it's so worth it because you get a seven day pass so you can come and go whenever you please for the entire week. And again, it has some of the best ocean views you can get here in San Diego. And let's head over to the Bayside Trailhead. From here, you can see downtown San Diego, the Coronado Bridge, Coronado Island, the Silver Strand, which leads all the way to Imperial Beach and then Mexico. This is also probably the easiest hiking trail you're gonna find in San Diego with these views because it's pretty much just a paved street so anyone can do it. Okay, I lied just a tad. It does get a little more rugged, but it's basically just small pebbles, so still not bad. Just watch out for the cliffs. This trail does close at 4 p.m. and the monument at 5 p.m. So it might be a little too early for sunset, but that's okay. There is a great place here at Point Loma for a sunset and we're gonna go check it out to end this video. And there's no better place to end this video and your trip than at Sunset Cliffs, the ultimate best place for sunset and just north of the Cabrillo National Monument. So there we have it, San Diego, California. In this video, I discuss many of the hotspots here and can't miss spots. I hope this guide provides you with an amazing trip and that you had as much fun watching it as I did making it. I myself am obsessed with this city and I can't wait for you to be as well. Be sure to check out some of my more in-depth adventure guides for La Jolla, Coronado, and Hidden Gems of San Diego. I'll link them below. If you're headed to Los Angeles as well, definitely check out my ultimate Los Angeles travel guide and for Orange County, Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, and San Clemente. If this video provided some value to you, hit that like button and subscribe to stay in touch. I make lifestyle videos here in California, travel guides, and even motivational short films. So I'll see you next time. Good night from sunny San Diego and enjoy the sunset at Sunset Cliffs.